Good morning. Good morning. We are a small but chatty group today. Great to see you all. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Greater Naples. My name is Tony Fisher. Uh, grateful to serve this congregation. It is a joy this morning for me to highlight uh, um, our weekend meals program. Uh, first of all, I should share with you that the matching gift program, the matching gift offer has been a success and we've reached our goal of, of uh, being able to service 150 children. And so uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, all of those uh, volunteers led by our chief organizer, Missy Cowan, uh, who have made this program work this year and fed um, or produced over almost 6,000 uh, bags of, of uh, nu nutritious meals for our, our kids over the weekend. And if you're here uh, and I read your name, I hope you'll stand up and be recognized. These are all the folks who've been involved in this program, this great program that we have here. Sherry Arns, J.B. Bernard, Annie Billado and Jim Bolduck, Patty Bryan, Sue Conway, Sandy Cunningham, Karen Doozy, Jane Ellsworth, Patty and Charlie Friedberg, Georgia Hopeful, Rosemary and Lance Horn, Laurie Kennecke, Evelyn Kuntz, Karen Longo, Laura Litton and Rich Zalesko, Diane Rahman, Bill and Marion Regal, Patsy Sachs, Kathy Sharon, Roy Stewie, Daphne Whitman, Helen Yates, Cheryl and Keith Inglis, Nora Marks and Louise, and Chris Taylor. Thank you all for making this happen. And thanks to Kathy Summers for being here again as our worship associate. Good morning, Tony. Good morning ourselves into this time of worship with the morning's prelude.
Patiently, we waited in the dark. The planet turned and we upon it, stupid with sleep, hoped something would happen. While we leaned toward the east, the weight of the night sank beneath us. Toward the north, the last planet blazed so close we could see it through the sleep in our eyes. And then dawn flung itself up, swirling with clouds and color and birdsong. Look, this is our world for another day. Reach out to it with open eyes. See it fresh and new. Know, too, that this day is dear even to strangers you will never know. Stretch your arms out to embrace it. Do not go back to sleep. Let's join together in the chalice lighting on the screen or in your order of service. Each day, the first day, each day a life. Each morning, we must hold out the chalice of our being to receive, to carry, and give back. And let's join together, rise and join together in singing our opening hymn, number 360 in the hymnal, the gray hymnal. Here we have gathered. The words will also be on the screen. Here we have gathered, gathered side by side, Sir, step inside may all who seek here find a kindly word may all who speak here feel they have been heard sing now together this our heart's own song Celebrate days of our lifetime, matters small and great. We of all ages, women, children, men, infants, and sages, sharing what we can sing now together. This our heart's own song. Life has its battles, sorrows, and regret. But in the shadows, let us not forget. We who all gather know each other's pain. Kindness and healness, and thy give we gain. Sing now to friendship, this our heart's own song. So I'm curious this morning. Why are you here? I have asked this question before, but um, what brought you here this morning? What expectations did you bring into the sanctuary this morning? Would anybody like to uh, offer? And your name? Uh, this, I'm Lance Horn. I Speak feel right into the microphone. I feel both comfortable and uncomfortable. But that's one of the reasons why I, all the reasons why I come here. All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, that's like the, you know I've used this before, but that's like the the old saw about ministers, you know, uh, afflicting the 
the uh, comfortable and and I'm going to forget what it is. Or, and comforting the afflicted. Comforting the afflicted. That's it. Thanks. Good morning. My name is Susan, and I struggle with not having expectations. Uh, I'm trying to not have so many expectations, so I'm looking for inspiration. <laughs> All right, there's a challenge. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I used to come here quite a bit in the past, and I'm back again largely because of my friend Susan. I'm Karen, and um, I've always enjoyed the UU services. I love the state of mind and the thoughtful exploration and the friendship and warmness. And, uh, but Susan is the one that really got me going again. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Susan. And a lot of expectations in that, Karen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mead Summers. I come here for new ways of thinking about things. I, I think, you know, I'm 80. I think I know most of the things I'm ever going to know. That's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. John. I come here to celebrate the wonderful day. There we go. And it is beautiful, too. All right. I'm going to go here. Hi, I come here because I feel that it's my home. All right, Patty. And all the expectations that go around <laughs> home. I, I have to agree with you. That's my reason for coming. I find comfort and um, just peace, a sense of peace when I'm here. Okay, all right. We can just stop now and meditate for the rest of the time. <laughs> then, right? All right, who was somebody else? Was, oh, Beth, you were going to say something. Well, I was essentially going to say the same thing. I just feel at home to be with people who think in the same way and in the intellectual stimulation that I get here. All right, excellent. Kathy, yes. Hi, I'm Kathy Schneider. I come mostly, mainly for hope. Um, Honestly, I find what goes on in the world today just so um, depressing. But I come here for hope because I know this is a congregation that will work for good and bring peace, justice, and equality. All right. Big expectations. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Dina. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm Dina Sewell. And I need to sit still for an hour every week and just listen and think and feel safe. There's too much craziness in the world. And this is a safe place. And he has to say, he has to say something. I, I come because I'm glad to be around other people who feel the way I do and help me remember that we're not living in absurdistan. I'm sorry. All right. But that is also a big expectation that everyone here feels the same way you do. I hope. <laughs> I'm Pat McCabe, and I come for other reasons, but what I expect and get is wonderful music. Ah, good. All right. All right. But I do too. <laughs> well, thank you all for sharing that. And, and it's, uh, there was, you know, a lot of commonality there and also some, some variations. Expectations are really strange things and we each carry them all the time. And I'm going to be talking about that a little later. My colleague, uh, Josh Snyder suggested at the end of the day we're all left in the same position as Alice was in Wonderland, thus our opening prelude this morning. On one side of the mushroom, we can eat it and grow large. We can set our expectations high, and if they come to fruition, maybe we'll have done something truly great, though we'll likely be miserable along the, pro along the way. Or we can eat from the other side of the mushroom, and grow small, lowering our expectations so that every moment is seen as a gift. 
a moment of grace, no matter what it may hold. Happiness then would be in the palm of our hand, though I don't know how motivated it would be to change the world, as Kathy suggested. The trick, Josh Snyder says, may be in knowing which half of the mushroom to eat and when. Let's join in singing our Centering Hymn, number 352 in the gray hymnal, Find a Stillness. The words will be on your screen. Find a stillness, hold a stillness, let the stillness carry me. Find the silence, hold the silence, let the silence carry me. In the Spirit, by the Spirit, with the Spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. Seek the essence, hold the essence, let the essence carry me. Let me flower, help me flower, watch me flower, carry me. In the Spirit, by the Spirit, with the Spirit, giving power, I will find a true harmony. And we do join together amidst the tumults of our individual lives, brought together by the desire for peace, comfort, affliction, whatever, and to share in a moment of joy or sorrow. I have a joy this morning that David Dust is with us again this morning on guitar. Would that he could be with us every week. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think we all hold great sorrows about the state of the world, as has been expressed, and our expectations, unfortunately, that each and every day will bring another mass shooting, as it did yesterday. So we hold in our hearts all those people affected by gun violence, those who work to promote gun safety and grateful for their efforts and their expectations for a better world. If you have a personal joy or sorrow you'd like to share this morning, I hope you'll raise your hand and once again I'll come out and offer you the mic. Please share what's on your mind, state your name, joys and sorrows. Good morning, my name is George. I have a, a joy to share. Uh, last week I was here and I was hopeful, uh, so it, it worked out pretty good. And then I had expectations all week. And now I'm joyful because my wife has returned from a trip uh, where she and friends of hers from Gainesville traveled across the midsection of the country uh, by car and by bicycle. And uh, so I was grateful and very joyful that she has returned safely to me. Thanks, George. Good morning. I have a personal joy that finally Collier County hired the right superintendent. <laughs> I have two joys to share. The first is that um, I know, and this might not be a joy everyone would share, but I know a lot of you will, that the, um, 
the citizen initiative on behalf of, um, of a, a multiple number of organizations supporting uh, women's rights to choose announced the citizen initiative that a multi-million dollar initiative they'll be undertaking with other groups um, it's already started and I'm I, I it lifted my spirits I couldn't be more thrilled the second thing that I wanted to share is that um, about three weeks ago I brought my little dog Stella here and some of you saw her it was her first visit here. She absolutely loved it here, which, <laughs> which, was, which was remarkable to me because she was dying. Mm. And, um, and I knew that, and I suspected, and it held true, that would be the last opportunity for her to come here. She loved the garden. She'd lost um, power of, uh, of her two rear legs. And um, so I could hold her up, usually to help her walk. But that Sunday, she walked on her own. And she walked around and into the garden. It was, it was, it was a miracle. And so many people here were so lovely and kind. This is the first time I can talk about her without crying, but I wanted to share this with you the first time I could because I was so moved by the love and kindness and support of, of, the, of the people who come here. Thank you, thank you. Share your name. Oh, I'm Kate. That was Kate. My name is Kathy Gorski, and I have a personal sadness. My husband Jack's sister, four and a half years younger than him, died just this past Thursday from... Uh, stage four melanoma, and it was essentially a 10 year, a 10 year, a 10 month, it maybe felt like 10 years to many of us, um, process. And anyway, the memorial's up in Canada where they live in a couple of weeks. And I have a personal, what's it called, public service announcement that if anyone's interested to hear something to think about, about melanoma, you can find me out on the pavilion at coffee hour. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, I'm Patsy Sachs, and I'm, I'm excited we're leaving on Tuesday to drive up to Virginia Beach because my new granddaughter from uh, San Francisco is going to come in with her parents, and I'll get to meet her. I'm so excited. <laughs> Excellent. I'm Chris Cowan, and I have a joy to share today that thanks to the Weekend Meals Meek and Eats campaign, the anxiety and fretting in our household has greatly diminished, so I'm indebted to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's Dean Sewell again. Um, I just wanted to add to what Vince was saying, because the university elected its first female president by a six to seven vote. Her name is Isagul Timur. And I have followed her for years. She's a very strong educator from Turkey. And she will make us all proud. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Good. The tide can be turned. Right up to your mouth, Bill. I'm Bill Green. And uh, I have a joy that... So much of my dear Peggy surrounds me here. And a sorrow that, given a couple of days, I've got to go back to the frozen north. <laughs> and, and we'll miss you, Bill. Uh, me, Summers, again, sorry to hog this, but we, we just got some exciting news. Our grandson graduated from Cal Poly out in California. And uh, what, what a year ago was a, 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 sell, a buyer's, I'm sorry, a seller's market. Uh, I, got it re I got it reversed. Anyway, a year, a year ago, you could get a job just like that. They're laying off at a lot of the high tech firms, and I was a little worried about his first job. He called me the other day to ask advice on should he accept a number that blew my mind. <laughs> and I said, don't, don't bargain with it. Do I, I think I'll bargain a little bit. So this is the younger generation. But uh, anyway, the good news is it looks like he's, he's landed. Excellent. All right. Thanks, me. So
so many joys and so many sorrows, knowing that there are many more in this room left unspoken. Let's center ourselves into a time of meditation. The idea, the desire really forms on the periphery of our consciousness. We bring it into focus, but not always all the way. To stare at it boldly, to consider it head on, might cause it to evaporate. And so we keep it there on the fringes of our awareness, neither grasping too tightly or letting it slip away. There it becomes entwined with other hopes and dreams. And if we're not careful, it solidifies into, if not into full expectation, then into something that anchors us in one way or another, never fully acknowledged, perhaps never shared. But there it sits, impacting our lives, impacting our relationships in ways that we don't always see. Let's join in some silence together. Blackbirds singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You are only waiting for this moment to arise Blackbirds singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You are only waiting for this moment to be free Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of the dark black night Blackbirds. <laughs> Sorry. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly moment to arise you were only waiting for this moment to arise you were only waiting for this moment to arise 
find my page. That's not it. Okay. <clears throat> this is Recognition by Darren Larson. Expectations have a way of creeping up on us. We tend to meet both life and the people around us with expectations, some conscious, some not. Of course, the people around us tend to meet us with expectations for who we are and how we will behave as well. In this poem titled Recognition, life coach and poet Darren Larson suggests we might do well to become more aware of our expectations in order to see more clearly. It is so difficult to see this flower because the countless others we've seen before cloud the view. Along with how we expect it to look and how it might be improved, even the faces of the ones we love deeply hide like buried treasure behind histories of expression. In order to see what is right in front of our eyes, we have to recognize we have gradually become blind and then begin the slow work of forgetting. When the paint jar tipped off of the table You watched as it started to fall Glass popped, shattered and splattered And paint spray hit the wall Bright blue glossy enamel Across the kitchen floor You said, good God, look at that pattern I've never seen that before Leave it like it is Never mind the turpentine, just leave it like it is, it's fine. Now when the paint dried, you gave it a title, you called it Kitchen Blue. A white frame painted around it, and gallery lighting too. The rich folks come over to dinner, they all want one of their own. They say, how much, who's the artist, and my, what a beautiful home. Leave it like it is, never mind the turpentine, just leave it like it is, it's fine. Most folks suffer in sorrow, thinking they're just no good. They don't match the magazine model as close as they think they should. They live just like the paint by numbers, the teacher would be impressed. A lifetime of follow the lines, so it's just like all of the rest. Leave it like it is, never mind the turpentine, just leave it like it is, it's fine. <laughs> All 
that was great. <laughs> when I was doing my ministerial internship in Concord, Massachusetts, 10 years ago now, my supervisor would offer up the following sage advice when things didn't go quite the way we had hoped. Better living through lower expectations. <laughs> A recognition based on his own experience that in congregational life, in ministry, in our own personal lives, things don't often go as anticipated. His view was that a lot of our dysfunction and a good amount of our unhappiness tends to be self-imposed, the result of expectations gone awry. We don't intentionally make ourselves miserable, but we do tend to carry around a whole universe of expectations, some of which are realistic and some of which are not, some of which we hold quite consciously and some that reside somewhere below the surface pieces of our own internal view of what is and what should be. As it's been said down the ages, we don't tend to see things as they are. We see them as we are. Sometimes we share our expectations with others. More often, we don't. Unhappiness tends to come not from some objective yardstick of performance measured against goals, but from disappointment when things don't come down the way we expected, no matter if those expectations were realistic, whether they were expressed or not. Later on, we'll touch briefly on the aspect of congregational life and all this, but this is more, message is more about me and you because I usually preach to myself, but... Uh, <laughs> As individuals, how each of us struggles to live up to our own set of expectations and our perception of what we think others expect of us. So thinking back on your comments today and coming here to in expecting a sense of peace or of being challenged, uh, connecting with people who think the way we do and with changing the world. Expectations that you're going to be stimulated by a service. <laughs> so my expectations for a Sunday morning range from the absurd to the mundane, right? Will I remember to put the matches near the chalice so that we can light the feeder candle so that we can light the chalice later on? Will my sermon be so wildly, incredibly moving that it will be picked up and spread across the entire Unitarian Universalist universe? <laughs> as unrealistic as those expectations are both, they are insidious. And if left unexamined, if they're negative expectations, it'll cause me some anxiety and hoping that they don't come true. Or if they're positive expectations, they may cause me some unhappiness in my failure to live up to them. But if I pull them all into the light of day, my own performance anxiety, my anxiety about your approval, my overblown hopes of glory, all tend to melt away. I'm not particularly an anxious person. But the point is that those little thought processes go on in each and every one of us, even in a non-anxious person. And to one degree or another, I believe that we all, quietly or not so quietly, are constantly doing this kind of thing to ourselves. We all have roles in this life roles that we've assumed naturally or roles that have been thrust upon us. Sometimes it's a combination of both. I recall my mother saying late in life that putting dinner on the table for a family of eight each and every day of the week for a few decades was not what she had in mind as a young woman. <laughs> but among all the other things she did, she did it well. 
with grace and without, without a doubt during that time she developed her own set of expectations and standards around that particular role. So we all have our familial roles, our roles as volunteers or at work, our roles as social beings. And within each one of those roles and with each one of the relationships we have with others, we set up our own hopes and expectations as caretakers, as financial stewards, as lovers, as friends, as parents, as members of a congregation. The list goes on and the expectations mount. And of course, even beyond those roles, there are those deeply held and well-protected hopes and dreams about what a happy life could and should be like. And those, too, can sometimes hold us hostage. And then what? Despite knowing deep down inside that stuff happens, big stuff often, either when we're cruising along or when we think we've already got enough to deal with, something we didn't expect gets plunked down right in the middle of our path from a bothersome car or home repair to something that far exceeds our energy and our pocketbook. From a call from a family member or friend who needs our help to a significant diagnosis we weren't looking for. It's only natural when our expectations, unspoken or otherwise, are being dashed by the realities of life and we catch ourselves thinking with irritation, resentment or sometimes anguish What did I do to deserve this? If you've experienced this kind of unhappiness, welcome to the human race. And welcome to the possibility of a different way. Buddhist teacher, author, and mother, Pema Chodron, writes, Generally speaking, we regard discomfort in any form as bad news. We consider feelings of irritation, resentment, disappointment, embarrassment, anger, anxiety as being negative. But for people who have a certain hunger to know themselves really well, these feelings are clear signposts that can teach us about the expectations we've been holding. They can teach us to wake up and look closely at our emotional responses, to lean in when we'd rather lean back. As Children says, these feelings can be like messengers that show us with terrifying clarity exactly where we're stuck. Instead of allowing the natural but unhelpful responses of anger, denial, or defensiveness to lead us to unhealthy reactions, we can stop and look within to see where it is we're getting caught, what it is we're responding to, which of our expectations are being dashed, And because we each have such a broad set of expectations, some perfectly logical and others wildly unrealistic, we are given these opportunities each and every day of the year. And we have the option to open up to the truth or shut down in the face of further discomfort. Each and every time one of those, I didn't ask for this, or why did this have to happen now, moments pop up, they provide us with an opportunity for self-examination to discover how attached we become to certain outcomes and how those attachments are affecting our ability to cope with all the stuff that life is going to throw our way. And since we don't live in a vacuum, the opportunity extends for us to consider how our reactions might be affecting the people with whom we work And play. This need for self-examination is especially important in relationship. We have, we all have ties that connect us closely to each other and to the world. Unitarian Universalist minister and theologian Forrest Church calls these connections lifelines, pointing out that Each and every person with whom we build a relationship can be an important lifeline in our world, a source of strength and support. We hold one end of that lifeline and they hold the other. In and of themselves, these lines are not complicated. But human nature being what it is, lines can get crossed. 
Sometimes we demand more of ourselves and others than either we or they are able to deliver church rights. Harsh judgments, both inner criticism and criticism directed at our neighbors, estrange us from our sources of connection. Jealousy, anger, bitterness, disappointment, fear of intimacy, failure, all the pain that accompanies any human relationship can cut us off from sources of resilience and comfort. In the cult novel, Islandia, by Austin Tappan Wright, there's an expression that describes when two people have unexpressed expectations that don't align. The term is unmeeting wishes, and the disconnect can be disastrous. Unmeeting wishes abound, but understanding that allows us to bring those crossed lines, those competing attachments out into the open, stare at them, stare them in the face, talk about them, and then, if need be, let them go. And if there's a need to mourn over them, then do that too. The antidote for all this is not new news. Wise ones of all cultures down through the ages have been taught that real happiness comes from when from two intertwined ways of being. The first way is the way of compassion. The Dalai Lama suggests that this path suggests this path when he writes, genuine compassion is not is based not on our own projections and expectations, but rather on the needs of the other. Getting out of our own head is often the healthiest, most healing thing we can do. But compassion must be directed inwardly as well. The way of compassion moves us through self-acceptance and forgiveness, two necessary ingredients for living in this world with any sense of equanimity. Which brings us to the second way to some degree of happiness. Recognize that unexpressed and unrealistic expectations lead to disappointment and frustration. Self-acceptance requires that we first wake up to our own expectations, let many of them go, and then work to focus our primary expectations, our conscious expectations, on the kind of person we want to be in this moment. Focusing our expectations on the kind of person we want to be in this moment and not some vague outcomes down the road. This doesn't mean we lower our standards or our goals as long as the goals are realistic and we put them in plain view. But the road to character, and thus, I believe, to happiness, is taken one step at a time in the here and now. Remember, I'm also preaching to myself here. Within the congregational setting, I'm not advocating for lower expectations, but I would advocate a couple of things. First, as our reading this morning suggests, that we greet each other with fresh eyes every time we gather. Letting go of our expectations of each other, seeing maybe for the first time what is in front of our eyes. And second, that we examine together our joint expectations so they are realistic and provide the greatest opportunity for success. The work we've done in the past to establish our mission, to work on our vision, to establish a covenant by which we promise to walk together in love, all serve to manage expectations, but these things need to be revisited regularly. And even then, they are only tools for us to use in the here and now. And so it should be in our personal lives. Expectations are nothing but attachments to anticipated outcomes. But as resting, and not as filtered through a lens of our expectations, but as resting with each other in the here and now. Let me try that again, sorry. <laughs> Expectations are nothing but attach, attachments to anticipated outcomes. If we can begin to see reality, not as filtered through the lens 
of our expectations, but as resting with each other in the here and now, constantly fluid and extraordinary. If we begin to see ourselves as serving the moment with the best of who we are and with compassion, we will be ready for what life throws our way and our lives and the world will at least seem a much better place. So may it be. As we take time to reflect on today's words and music, let's take time also to show our gratitude for this community and all that it does. This morning's offering will be gratefully received. Please consider sending a contribution today and the information you need to donate is on your screen. circus now I am watering elephants but I sometimes lie awake in the sawdust dreaming that I'm a suit of light Late at night at the empty big top I'm all alone on the high wire Ladies and gentlemen There is no net this time He's the real death defier I'm the kid who Always looked out the window Failing the tests in geography But I have seen things Far beyond just this schoolyard Distant shores of exotic lands There's the spires of the Turkish Empire Six months since we made landfall Riding low with the spices of India Through Gibraltar we're rich men all Thought we'd someday be lovers Always held out That the time would tell Time was talking Guess I just wasn't listening no surprise if you know me well as we're walking down toward the train station i hear a whispering rainfall i cross the boulevard you slip your hand in mine in the distance, the train's last call. I'm the kid who has 
this habit of dreaming that sometimes gets me in trouble too. But the truth is I could no more stop dreaming than I could make them all come true. That was lovely. We have a few reminders of what's happening this week at UUCGN before we sing again. I'm a member of another community, and so sometimes UU is going to come out as something different. So, um, The next set of Circle Dinners is coming up Friday, May 19th. For those of you who don't know, circle dinners are small gatherings of seven to nine members and friends centered around a shared meal and providing an opportunity to get to know some folks better. You can find out more by looking at today's Sunday news or in the email blast for this week. The other item of interest is that the next drumming circle will be held on Sunday, May 21st in the afternoon. These drumming circles have been a great success, and our drum leader, Isaac Fernandez, makes it both easy and enjoyable to create some wonderful rhythms together. Again, check out the News Blast for more information. Last but not least, we express our joy once again of anyone who has joined us today for the first time. If you didn't get a chance to fill out a visitor's card on the way in and would like to do so, there's some more blank cards on the table in the foyer. Now... You see number seven on your program, but this is an expectation. It is called the leaf unfurling number seven in the gray hymnal, but to keep you on your toes, we're going to sing it to the tune of For All the Saints, which is number 103. The words will be on the screen. The leaf unfurling in the April air, the newborn child, the loving parents care, these constant common miracles we share. Look, this is our world for another day. Reach out to it with open eyes. Seek within and without for life-saving truth. Know, too, that this day is dear even to strangers you will never know. Stretch out your arms to embrace it. Do not go back to sleep. Go in peace. Go in love. Have a wonderful day.